I think we're set. Right. Great. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jennifer Brunell. I'm the director of the Montana Memory Project at the State Library. And um, if you haven't been to the MMP lately or you haven't been paying attention to our multitude of posts through Wired, um, we have moved. We have made a huge move. And we moved from Content DM to a new platform called Recollect, which is hosted for, um, in New Zealand by New Zealand Micrographics. And um, <clears throat> What I'd like to do today is just kind of give you a tour of our new website, our new homepage. I'm going to hide these darn floating tools that keep getting in my way. You can't see them, but I can, and then they're right on top of everything. Um, so our homepage now has a new look, new feel. Um, when you look at the URL in the address line, um, I want you to notice that we're back to using www at the front of our address. If you've had it bookmarked as mtmemory.org, We've had some people who have had some caching issues who have not been able to get to the website. Um, so what we've told them to do is to clear their cache um, and then also maybe rebookmark it as www.mtmemory.org. Um, we do have a redirect so that anything with mtmemory.org should come to that page, but the cache has really messed that up on both on all of the browsers. We've had the same problem whether we're using Edge or Firefox or Google Chrome. So just note, um, if you bookmark the page as a, as a homepage, we should be using www. <clears throat> also, if you've bookmarked um, specific collections and haven't updated those, you're gonna wanna look at those links and update them now. All of our links to Content TM content have been broken. And our links in Digital Public Library of America are also broken. We hope to rectify those in December's ingest. So links have been a little bit of an issue, but we're working through it. Our homepage as a whole has, um, I think, really improved. It's a nice streamlined page. You can search right from the homepage. Um, and this will just be a general search, meaning it'll search all of the images and all of the um, text or content within a type document that's been ran through optical character recognition or OCR. Um, we'll talk about advanced searching and how you can do a little bit more of that in a minute. When you scroll down the home page, you'll get our welcome and talks about the fact that we're still moving. We still have 39 collections to migrate <clears throat> of 174. This is the total number of collections and I'll show you how you can tell whether a collection has been moved or not in just a moment. Um, we, you can also see a list of contributors or you can just show all of the items. If I scroll down a little further, you have several options to browse by type. If you click on any of these, you'll get taken immediately to a list of these particular items. And you can see how many items are in that set here on the grid. And if I scroll down a little further, there's another way to view collections. There's a, um, information about how to contribute content for contributing institutions. And there's a view highlights page, which we're gonna come back to. The highlights is the newsletter that Pam helps me with every week. She writes and puts up that content um, through our listserv, through Gov Delivery, as well as through Wired and the School Library Media um, listserv. <clears throat> Down the left-hand side are the main navigational tools, and we're also going to talk about these today. But I wanted to start with the three buttons in the middle, Contributor, Collections, and Show All. And I've opened these ahead of time just because whenever I'm presenting, uh, it seems to be a little bit slower if I, uh, I try to open things while I'm in a Zoom meeting. So um, the contributors page is just that. It lists all the contributing institutions in alphabetical order. Um, and if I scroll through, you can see who the contributors are. You can also then click on one of these contributing institutions and you could see um, information about that institution, in this case, the Billings Public Library and information about the co collections they've contributed. And if I keep scrolling, there are then links to both the Billings Public Library homepage and the collections from the Billings Public Library. And if I keep scrolling, I start to see some samples of the content. So this is samples of the images that they've contributed in multiple collections, uh, yearbooks they've contributed. And if I keep scrolling the documents, and if I keep scrolling, then the collections themselves, a list of all the collections and links back to them and books. Um, and then those are repeated over here on the left and you can see how many of each item there are. So there's 1,149 images, um, but those are separated out into different collections. So the postcards are an image collection. 
the images of places which you see has a gray no picture here that's because that one has not migrated yet and i'll talk more about that in a minute as well as images of people and images of places so if i click on this it's going to take me to a list of all of those images if i click on these specific collection types it's going to take me to, to a list of those collections <clears throat> you'll notice too at the end of these sections where there's some examples there's also a great arrow that will take me to the whole list of those items so i'm looking at the documents here it's going to take me to the list of all 74 documents when i click on that button for me to scroll through and then search some more um from the home page though if you remember the next item here was collections and i'm going to jump into that we get a similar looking page that shows all of the collections <clears throat> these are in alphabetical order um, so there are four pages of collections total, and you can jump to any page by just typing in here. Let's say I want to go to page three. There are 48 items to a page, so that of the 174 results. <clears throat> and this is slowly loading here. You'll notice, though, that I have two of those gray no image items. Again, um, I mentioned earlier that we still are migrating content and we have 39 more collections to move these are two of those 39 collections that have yet to be migrated so we've got a placeholder to say hey we haven't forgotten about these collections they are coming we just haven't gotten them moved over to the new site yet and we're at a point where <clears throat> um, some of these are a little more problematic for example um, the Kalispell water department right reports the way i have gotten the originals back on those is they are numbered 1.jpg, 2.jpg, on through however many hundreds of pages there are in this collection, with no um, distinction between page one of a book, because these are multiple page reports or, or booklets. And um, I have to open each item to figure out where the book starts, where it ends, and then group that item and then upload it. So. Um, these are just the slower, all the others were faster to, to get taken care of and I got those out of the way as quickly as I could and loaded and now I'm, I'm just working on the ones that are a little more time consuming. I hope to continue plugging away through those and get them loaded for you. Um, on the left, I want you to notice there are <clears throat> uh, format. This filter by and format is the, the top left here. If I click on that, that allows me to format or to short, sort these items out by the type. So we're browsing all of the items. Again, we're on page three of 174 collections and collection is highlighted here, but we could narrow it down. If I wanted to only look at artwork, audio, if I wanna look at the 81 contributors or the documents, these facets here on the left allow me to um, change my search results a little bit. And the number afterwards tells me how many items are in that group. And I can use the little gray arrows next facet even further. So if I drop this little gray arrow down under audio, we'll see interviewee, interviewer, because somebody has chosen to use those terms in their metadata, subject, contributing institution, or geographic coverage. So if I look at interviewers, I will see a list of names of people who have conducted interviews, and I can see a number afterwards, how many people they interviewed, and I can look at those. So Mary Murphy, who many of you know, has interviewed 33 people. And if I look at that, then I'm, I'll click on that, I'm going to see just those 33 interviews come back to the search results here. You'll notice these also don't have pictures. <clears throat> and I wanted to show the distinction between those items. Um, in the collections page, when there's no picture on a collection, it means it hasn't moved. But with the audio files individually, a lot of times we didn't have an image of the person that was interviewed, and so there is no picture here, but you'll see a little microphone when you hover over the item, and that will show you that it is an interview. If I go back and I hover over these documents that we opened a little bit ago from Billings, you'll notice there's a book when I hover over it in the upper right hand corner. So it's kind of telling you what they are <clears throat> before you open the item. Um, and these, these many audio files do not have photos with them. So that's, a, that's the other reason you might see something without an image. <clears throat> I'm gonna jump into the browse all page, which is the same as um, the browse all here or the show all on the home page. And I have that link open at the top here. So I'm gonna jump into that. These again are an alphabetical list of all the items. Um, and there are 
too many to count. There's over 68,000, which is what it says here on the homepage, 749 right now. And every time I add a new collection, it adds to that list. So <clears throat> um, I can now open any one of these items, but as I scroll over, I wanted to point out that little icon at the top. Notice on the two images, we get a little image template. Here's one with a microphone because it's an interview. And if I keep scrolling, um, we'll see some different types, primarily images on this first page. But the, high, the yearbooks have all been loaded as PDF document type, and that's because they open in a PDF viewer on the screen. Um, and you can search that PDF document right within the PDF viewer. And I'll come back to, the, to that and show you what I mean by that. But it allows, once you've opened a year of a yearbook, you can search that yearbook more <clears throat> in depth on that, in that PDF viewer. And so we've also done that with county history books. We've opened them as a specific PDF document type so that you can search within. There are 48 items here on the page. So as I scroll through, um, I'll get to the bottom of the page and then there'll be a uh, page sorter here. So I can continue to sort through by page or I can type in here again and jump to a page number if I know about where I wanna be. I'm gonna scroll back up to these facets on the left because now they're gonna look a little different than when we looked at them with collection. <clears throat> Nothing is gonna be highlighted because we're browsing everything and we didn't narrow anything down yet. But I can narrow it down by type here on the left. And if I show more, there are more types. So one of the things I mentioned was PDF document type. That's what all of the yearbooks and a lot of our history books have been lo lo loaded as. We also have a record type for prison records. The reason we've done this is this so that we can list specific metadata for the different types of content. And I'll show you why that's important with these prison records. If I do the little drop down arrow there to show some more facets, I have some very different types of facets under prison records. I have alias, crime, and location of crime. And that's because we set up the metadata template to have these specific items filled in. <clears throat> so if the person had went by an alias, we use a drop down arrow here then they are recorded. So none recorded comes up um, 8,366 times and none recorded with a lowercase r instead of uppercase r comes in 23 times. So you can see we have an error in one of our metadata fields that we'll need to rectify um, so that those all come up together. But Charles Williams, John Smith, Carl Johnson all used as an alias multiple times. <clears throat> if I keep um, and sort by crime, you can see theft burglary and grand larceny were our top three crimes in the state of Montana through 1971, which is the date that these prison records end. Um, and you can then click on any one of these and sort by that item type, um, which looks really different than if you look at say image, we see creator, subject, contributing institution and geographic coverage as our filters for that type. Um, but that can really help you narrow it down. So if you know that you wanted to look at um, photographs only taken by R.H. McKay, there's 882 photographs in here, or Elrod, Morton Elrod, 727, or L.A. Huffman, three really popular um, photographers, and followed by Evelyn, Evelyn Cameron with 656 photos. And just clicking on any of those names will pull back that list. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and let that load because I wanna show you what happens with these filters on the left. So I've selected image, I've selected creator, and if I scroll down, I've selected Evelyn Cameron. They're all highlighted. And if I select Evelyn Cameron again, that actually will remove that filter. So you can also go backwards in your filters to enlarge your search again. So now we're back to the main page um, and browse of all of them. You'll notice that there's little squares on each of these. That's because I can select them and I can save them to favorites if I'm logged in. Right now I'm not logged in. So over here on the left, you'll notice there's a login button. I'm gonna show you the logged in version of this a little bit later and we'll talk about adding things to favorites in a minute. Up here at the top, you can see an uncheck all or check all. So if I wanted to select all of these items on the page, it would check mark all of them or uncheck all of them. I can do a download for the metadata. I can contact us. And if you put a check mark here and then hit contact us, it'll send this link with your letter 
to us so that we know you're talking about this particular item, which is really helpful if you're asking a question about an item or clarifying metadata or something like that. You can also select certain items and share them through social media, through Twitter, Facebook, or email. And then you can um, save certain items to compare them. So if I wanted to compare these two items, I can hit the compare and it will open a new page. And this is a new feature. So now I can look at them side by side with the metadata and compare those two pictures. <clears throat> I'm gonna close that view, and go back to this page. You'll notice there's also some display as buttons here. Right now I'm, I'm viewing these as tiles, but I could display this as a list instead. Just, just changes the look of the display. And then I can order them by title Z to A instead of A to Z or the added most recently or earliest at items added means, means the oldest. They've been on the system the longest, let's put it that way. <laughs> um, so that kind of gives you an overview of all these things here on the, on the format by and how to look at items and change the look of the items on the browsing page. This format will options change as you filter down a little bit more. So um, let's say, I uncheck these two items and let's filter by book. Um, and I'm gonna hit just, just all books actually. And now when I have this filter by, um, I get the creator option, get some different things. But as I, as I sort through, um, like if I'd already done a search, these, the list of items over here might change a little bit. So just keep that in mind, depending on the page you're on. That wasn't a very good example because I didn't show you that well, but I'll show it again later. I do want to scroll down a little bit further because you can jump also to where it starts alphabetically. So if you know these are all listed alphabetically and you want to jump to the R's of the list, you can click on R and it'll jump you to the first item that starts with R. And you can scroll through those items. And I can switch it back to tile view if I'd prefer to see it in tile format. The number of tiles across the screen is gonna depend on your screen size. Today I'm on my laptop, so I'm seeing three items across the screen. If I was on one of my um, larger <clears throat> monitors, <clears throat> four of these items are, might show up across the screen. And then you can also sort by date. So if I skip down here, you can type in the date or you can use the calendar. Um, and this little drop down will let you choose the month and year you want to search. Um, or, like I said, you can just hover over these portions and change it and from and to. So, a start date and an end date um, of the time period you'd like to search for will help you narrow down those images. Questions about this um, browse all? There's something in chat. Oh, that's Pam sharing the link. Okay. All right, so I'm going to jump back to the home page and, and scroll down um, here. I will stop you for a second. Mary Drew has a question. She's curious about the has the following facet. Sure. Um, let me jump back into that. So right now there's just two options in there, geotags or OCR. Um, so it has an OCR record, meaning it has an optical character recognition, which we'll come back to or a geotag, meaning it's been geotagged, saying where it's from, which we don't have as many of those as I'd like to have yet. I have also not yet set up any taxonomies. Um, those are things that we'll circle back to after the migration is complete and try to fill this out so that we have a little better searching options there. So this is just related to some of the metadata that is available and the taxonomy is if I set up a taxonomy um, for searching, which I have yet to create. Okay, on the homepage, I mentioned that there is a view highlights box on the, on the homepage at the very bottom. And that highlights will take you to a collection. Um, this is the collection landing page. It says a little bit about the MMP highlights, that the topic is highlights and that the MMP is the contributing institution for this collection. And these are newsletters that we send out every Friday that kind of highlight some of the unique content we have, as well as offer suggestions for how to search and use the page. 
So I want to make sure that you're all aware that this is there because this is a really good record when you're looking for how to search. <clears throat> um, we have several examples. So I'm going to open the August 13th one, which is more of a highlight the content um, example. Um, in this case, we were highlighting the photos from the Montana Historical Society. That's going to be really slow to load. I apologize. Like I said, when I'm in, in a meeting, it takes forever to load something. This is that PDF viewer I mentioned. So our yearbooks would open in a similar PDF format like this. And so would our county history books. So there is a search button right here and I can search this document um, for something. It's not as helpful in a one page document, which this is one of one page, but when you're searching a 500 page or a 200 page yearbook for classmates, then it becomes very helpful because then it'll highlight the word right on the page. Um, you can zoom in and out, and then there are other options hidden under the little double arrows here for how to look at the page, vertical or horizontal scrolling, wrap scrolling, rotating pages, things like that. If I scroll down, we were highlighting um, the Historical Society photographs, as I mentioned, and then the recent Budmore sound recordings. So um, at, in August, we had just finished the photo. So Pam had highlighted those and explained some of the information on how you can scroll through these items. Um, I'm gonna hit the back arrow because I'd like to show you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hit the back, okay. Um, I was gonna show you this one from July 30th where Pam is uh, talking about in this one, how to use those the advanced search, some of the advanced search tools, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So this one was more of a how-to guide, um, talking about how you use the advanced search. On the right is all the metadata for the item, and this is the same when you open any item. And on the left is some links. So we're linking back to the Montana Memory Project as an institution, or the collection itself, MMP highlights, so I could get back to all of them. And there is a copyright listed here for these. So I'm gonna jump back to the homepage and I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and we're gonna focus on these buttons down the side here. We just talked about browse all. So I'm gonna skip down to search. In that last highlights that I was just looking at, we were looking at this search page. I can just do a general search for the last name Burnell, for example, I'll use my own last name and hit the search button. And it's gonna search all the text, everything for that last name Burnell. And it found 24 results. And you'll notice a lot of these are yearbooks. Um, so there's the Halberd and then the Troubadour, which is the uh, journalism uh, publication from Hellgate High School, as well as some high school yearbooks, Conrad's, Shoto's. Um, there are some military enlistment cards. There's a cemetery listing from the Fergus County Montana cemeteries. There's a listing in the Polk directories. So you can see the, the name, last name Burnell shows up several times in several different places. I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to hit the back arrow or I'm going to hit the search button. Either way will take me back to the main search page. And this time I'm going to type in my name. And if I search Jennifer Burnell and just hit search, I should get the same 24 results because it's gonna look for Jennifer and Burnell. Oh, it only found 14, that's good. Um, so it's looking, for, trying to find both names, Jennifer or Burnell. And so both have shown up in somewhere in one of these 14 publications. Um, but it didn't look for them together, tied together as a single name. In order to do that, I need to go to Jennifer Burnell, and then go over here for search for and change it to exact phrase match because I don't want Burnell by itself and I don't want Jennifer by itself. I want both names together. And if I do exact phrase match over here under the search for instead of all keywords or any keywords and do a search, eh, no search results. That's okay. I'm not on the MMP and I'm okay with that. Um, so that's, that's how you determine you know, what your search result list will look like is through these facets. So I'm gonna go back to the search page and let's say I'm only interested in photographs and I'll use an old one, an old standby. I want photographs of grizzly bears and I want to uncheck all because by default, you're searching everything. 
So you'll notice all of those types that we talked about earlier are listed. I want to uncheck them all and select just image. I just want photographs of Grizzly. And I can do it within a date, data endpoint. Um, it can be the title only. It could be in any of the um, metadata fields, or it could be in all fields and the content. And that would mean if I was searching something with an OCR record, it would be searching the OCR record and the metadata. I want to search just Grizzly in the title. So I'm going to narrow it down just a little bit more. Um, I could also put a date range. Let's say I wanted it from um, a specific time period. With my general search of Grizzly, I'm not going to do that. I only have one term, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave it at all keywords, and I'm going to hit search. And we should come up with a list with the term grizzly right in the title. And you can see as I hover over these, it might not be the first word in the title, but it is there, and it's highlighted in yellow on the screen. To go back to the advanced search page for just a second. Um, so you can do that with any format. Um, and again, if I did uh, a first and last name or um, a phrase, I'd want to make sure I selected exact phrase match from here. So if I were searching Evelyn Cameron, I do want an exact phrase match and I want the format to be. Um, document type because I know she has been mentioned in many documents. It is really not this slow typically, so I apologize. Um, between the high winds we're having here, I think that's kind of messing with my internet today. And then of course, being in a Zoom meeting, it always takes longer. While we're waiting for it to load, are there more questions? I will just say that most people are muted. So if you want to put a question in the chat, that would be great. Um, I'm not sure if people can unmute themselves in this or not. Um, I kind of hit and miss on that. But the chat would be a great place to do questions if you have questions. Yeah. Jennifer, I just had a quick question. Sure. Um, why did you switch from Content DM? I've used it a lot, and this seems like it, but it's a little different. What were the advantages? We're going to get to that in just a minute. There's actually quite a few. Um, one, the search works so much better. For what I just did there to search for Evan Cameron, would have taken about 15 steps to accomplish the same result. Um, because you had to oh, dig down, you had to find specific collections to search for her, you had to know which collections she was in, you couldn't just search documents. Um, so she comes back in all of her diaries, of course, but then she comes back, if I keep scrolling, in other mentions here. Um, so minutes books, poke directories, her name comes back several places. Um, and this is a far better result than what I would have gotten in content. Um, um, okay, I was just curious. Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, some of the other things which we're going to talk about is this ability to log in, which I'm going to talk about next. So right here, you'll notice there is a login button. Um, and I can log in as myself. And it pops up some additional features for me. And again, I apologize for the slowness. This is unusually slow. While we're waiting for that, I'll just ask or mention that Suzanne had a question about dates, the dates a document or photo was created in the metadata, or are they associated with when it was loaded? So if you That's want to talk about question. dates um, after you do yeah. this. Yeah, the dates is usually, oh well, it's tied to when it was created, when the document or photo was created, not with when it was loaded. We have added loaded dates, but we have kept them out of the search because it's more true to the the researcher, I guess, if you are looking for things um, based on the date that they were created. Um, and that's that's what we're going for with the date searches. So you'll notice on the left right now, 
it changed a little bit. I had a My History button and I had a Login button. Now I have a My History, My Profile, My Collection, this little More button, and Admin. Admin, you guys won't see unless you are um, assigned an editor's role or higher. Um, but our members won't see this button. Because I am the administrator for the site, of course, I have that extra tool. If I go to my history, though, if I had been logged in earlier, we would have seen a little bit more of this current session. But it does show that I went to the Billings Public Library page and viewed that, which we saw together, and that I searched for Evelyn Cameron, because um, that was just, just here. This notice is just for the current session. But how this is helpful is if you've searched for several things, you can now go to your history um, and, and remind yourself the things you've searched for and, and try to get back to content that you found once before and then pay have, be having problems getting back to. Um, it'll take you back to the things that you viewed and looked at already, as well as searches you performed so that you can research those same ones. So all I have to do is hit this and I would search that same Evelyn Cameron search again. Um, or I could jump right back into the Billings Public Library page because it, it hyperlinks it here for me. And after you've searched 20 or 30 things in a session, that becomes very, very helpful. Um, you can clear your history at any time. And then if you close out of this web browser, your history is automatically cleared. It's only for this current web browser session. If I go down to my profile, I have the ability now to change my password, change my name or change my email address if I, I want to have this account associated with a different um, email address. One of the things that this system allows is for individuals to contribute content. We have not turned that on. So um, there are there, uh, there is the ability for you to add content or to suggest edits to content, which is one of the things that Content DM, DM did not allow us to do. And one of the reasons we really liked this platform to, as a change um, so we often find that we have people tell us that we have errors in our metadata and sometimes we need to vet that information to make sure it's right, but we had no good way to um, sift through that information. We usually got it through Facebook, which when 500 people comment on a post in Facebook, it's a little hard to keep track of. Um, the ones that are just saying great picture and those that are saying, hey, this guy's name is wrong. Um, so we we're looking forward to being able to turn the My Suggested Edits on and allow people to say, hey, you've messed this up so that we can then do a little research our, on our end and see if that's correct or true and if our edit, metadata should be edited. Um, so I'm gonna go back to this page where I had the browse all list. Um, I've got 33 items on that page. Let's do this one. So if I put check marks here, in these photos, and um, these are some pretty good ones by in the R section here. Um, and I'm gonna refresh this page so I'm logged in because I did log in on this browser. It should see that. Yep. Now I've got to recheck these. Okay, so I've checked these three items. Sorry, I thought I did. There we go. And because I'm logged in, um, I can hit this My Collections now, and it's gonna add those three photos to my collection. And it tells me that I've added three to my collection. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna click My Collection. And we're gonna see that those three photos I just clicked on are right here at the top of my, my collection list. So this allows me to save any item. And you can see I've saved quite a few because every time I demonstrate, I save a few more. And when we were first playing with this product, Pam and I were trying to figure out how to set up our, our monthly Facebook posts. And in July, we decided to focus on parades. So you're gonna notice there's a whole bunch of different parade images in here because we were playing with how this worked. So over here on the right um, side of the screen, I have collections. So I have cars, images, books, and July posts. Well, if I open this July posts section, all those parade photos we added to a collection um, over here. So any of these pictures I can organize so that I can go back to them. If I'm doing different types of research, it really helps me keep track of where things are. So I have a section of just cars and these are images of cars that I selected and 
put in this organized fol folder kind of is how you would think of this. Um, I have just a random images one and I have a random books one. So these three that I just added, maybe I want to start a new, new one or I want to add it to existing. So I select it, then I select the folder I want to put it in. So I'm going to select images in this case. If none of these are right, I would go over here and start a new collection and then that would show up over here. And so I would just click this and write um, McKay, let's say, or our photos, because that's really what these are. Um, and now I have a new folder taped, labeled over here and I have that option show up over here. So I can make my selection. I took it away when I just clicked off of it. So I want them all to go in the R photos folder. And I hit add checked items to collection. They are still gonna remain in this list. So there's the unsorted list over here, but then the three R photos are now also over here. And I have a few options. I can delete any of these items from the list. I can forward this collection, all of these items to somebody in a share this collection button, which is gonna open in a new window and ask me how I wanna share it. Um, and it says the link you're sharing is permanent, but the content, content may not be. So any changes I make to your collection will be shared too. So if I delete something or add six more pictures, there, that's all gonna be in the shared link. I'm gonna close out of this. Um, I can rename this collection. I didn't like my R photos name and R, or I can delete the whole collection. So we had a way to save favorites in um, Content Dam, but we were limited to 100 items and you couldn't organize that 100 items. It was just a running list of 100 items. So we feel like this is a much better way to bookmark items that you'd like to come back to. This is tied to your username and password. So even though if I, I close out of this session and close out of this browser, uh, when I log back in, I can still get to my private collections. It will always be there tied to my username and password. It doesn't go away. That was the other thing with Content DM. Um, your favorites were tied to a browser session, not a username and password. And so you didn't keep them past a, a session. Um, this little more button here opens another window that gives us an about us page, a contact us page, our partners page, a list of our genealogy resources, another way to look at our contributors. Um, then I mentioned my contributions. When we turn on the ability to um, allow you to contribute individual items, the, your my contributions will show up here. And then your private collection, which is this page. So these are just links through to other things. Um, very soon, I will be adding montananewspapers.org here because all of our newspapers have been moved to montananewspapers.org. They're no longer in the MMP. And I will be adding DPLA to this list. Um, those are some of the final things I have yet to do as part of the migration. So questions about some of these buttons on the slide. Okay, and because we had a question about um, some of the other features, I do wanna jump into that. So I'm gonna open photographs here. We have 35,000 photographs, 964 all together so far on the MMP. And like I said, we still have 39 collections to migrate. And let's say I open this one. Um, and if I scroll down here on the right, I get a list of information about this, this photograph. And this is true anytime I open any object in the MMP, I get this list of metadata. So I could see that the creator here was LA Huffman. This name is hyperlinked, and that's because if I wanna see more photos by Huffman, let's say I really like this and I think, oh, wow, I wonder if there's more photos by this guy, that's a great photo, which it is. And Huffman is a very well-known photographer. I can click this link and it'll find, as it says when I hover over it, find all creator equals Huffman. So it's gonna take me right to every photo that we have in the MMP by Huffman. Um, I can just jump to photographs. I can also jump by subject. So each of these are hyperlinks. So if I wanted to find more pictures of Cheyenne Indians, Montana, I would click that and it would give me all that have that subject. 
Um, I can also jump to the, to the contributing institution or to the digital collection. So this is all photographs from the Montana Historical Society. Or the physical collection is also linked to your LAF and photograph collection. So specific to the Historical Society's collection. And if I keep scrolling, the information about how to order a reproduction or how to use um, or suggest changes or edits is listed here for the Historical Society. On the left here, you'll notice that there are image tags. I can actually um, add tags for any of the people. So I would drop a tag on this guy. If I knew his name, I could type in his name and it would show up there on the page. That is something that we did not have the ability to do with ContentDM. So you can see it says show tags. Um, once I've created a few tags, I can say hide tags to take them off the image, but they'll actually be a name right here on each of these people if I knew their individual names. I do not, so I did cancel that. Um, notice here there's also link to, and it goes to the collection itself as well as, or to this contributing institution, excuse me, and the cl whole collection from that institution. And then there's a recollection. So I can click add here and type a story and hit add my story. What this will do is basically give me the opportunity to say what I know about this photo. So if this happened to be a relative of mine sitting here, I could say, hey, that's my great, great uncle, blah, blah, blah. He used to sit and visit with um, and interview different people um, and write stories about them. I, you know, I'm making this up just based on the title here, but I could write whatever I wanted there and then share it. Obviously, we want to be careful about this and about the tags. We don't want this guy to be labeled Mickey Mouse. Um, and I don't want to make up some complete lie here like I just did and submit that. We encourage people to tell the truth. So these are things we're going to have moderation for. Um, I have been able to hire for the first time an employee for the Montana Memory Project. He is starting next Monday. I'm very excited. And uh, he will be helping me moderate these things. So we will be able to, after a period of training for him, turn these things on for the general public. Right now, you can't add a tag and you can't add a re recollection um, because we haven't turned that on in the system. I, you can see it because I'm logged in as an admin. Um, but those are things that we'll be able to add that we couldn't do in um, uh, Content DM. Sorry, I clicked into the admin panel and I didn't mean to. Although while I'm there, I will show you, this is the other huge advantage over Content DM. This one admin panel lets me manage everything. In Content DM, I had to go to three different places to manage the website. And then here I can do it all through one slick and easy to use backend page. So I manage the whole website from right here. I do want to show you a couple different types of items in here. So I'm gonna to go to the home page again. <clears throat> and I'm gonna close some of these tabs just so that we have a few less things open here. And I'm gonna scroll down to yearbooks. We have 2000 yearbooks on right now. Um, and if I go to format, if I wanna see a specific schools, um, you'll see that they're all, they should all be PDF document. I don't know why this shows one, that's bizarre. Um, and 1999 yearbook. Oh, cause they should be all yearbook templates. One got uploaded as a PDF document, that's what it is. So I have one to fix, in other words. Um, if I click on the gray by yearbook though, I can also see contributing institution or geographic coverage. So if I wanted to see just the ones from uh, Missoula or Conrad or Big Sandy, um, I could click on any of these places and it will pull back those different yearbooks. Um, I'm gonna open the ones in Conrad because we looked at this earlier when we searched my last name. So now it's gonna pull back 95 yearbooks from Conrad in alphabetical order um, or at chronological order here because that's how they were loaded. And I'm gonna scroll down to 1954, I went too far. So 
So I told you, since these are PDF document type, I can search this now. Well, I know that my mom and aunt were in high school in 1954 in the big town of Conrad, Montana, and their last name was Harris. And so there's Margaret Harris right there. That is my beautiful Aunt Peg. Um, and so I can look her right up. That is my mom's younger sister. And for some reason, the OCR did not catch mom's name, but she is also right in here. I can find her. We were not on the same page, which I think is interesting. There she is. There's the lovely Mary Harris. That would be my mom. So um, because these are PDF documents, it's really to search, easy to search within these. So somebody that's in her age group, if I wanted to search, um, so McDermott, Lorna McDermott married my aunt, my uncle Elmo, and she was a classmate, oops, excuse me, of my, um, my mom's. So her name comes up on the page here as being in this group of people who are part of the library staff, which is kind of cool. Um, and then you can see there's two of two matches. So anytime that name comes back or McDerm, which is all I typed here, comes back, it's going to show up on the page and it gets highlighted on the page. So, um, and I don't know where that one is. I'm not seeing it. There it is, Lorna McDermott again. So she's in this group right here in this play. So um, that makes it pretty handy when you're searching PDF documents. And again, we did that with our county history books as well so that you could search within those. And you can zoom in on those or zoom out, okay? Um, then if I go back to the home page and open another document type for you, um, take off your book. Oh, I, I'm gonna do a browse all here and then do that. I'm gonna go into the audio files and I am gonna go into Let's see, I wanna do contributing institution, the historical society. Or, so these are all the voices of labor that come right up at the top, but there's also some for um, uh, Bud Olson in here. And I'm in the wrong collection, that's why. I want to be in the University of Montana. I apologize. Uncheck Montana Historical Society, so we narrow this down. So these are the Bud Moore audio files. And you'll notice these have an image with them and that's because the Historical or the University of Montana decided to load a picture with them. So I'm gonna open this one that's labeled ACM Camp 3 you'll see that the picture loads right behind the audio player and I could hit the play button and it'll start playing this audio file. And I can scroll down here in the metadata and on the right hand side, you're gonna see the related image that goes with this um, audio. It's also over here on the left. And so now I can see that full sized image just by clicking on that link on either side and it will load the image into the page. Now, I didn't show you the tools here on the left, but there's all these tools for how to view an image. So I can zoom in 186% so I can see some of these details up close. Um, I can read that license plate actually, C45672 or 5872. Um, see the details of this camp, how it was built a little bit better. Um, I can also show it 100% on a full screen by itself. Um, and you can see the orange overlay here on the little thumbnail in the lower right hand corner shows how much I'm viewing. So if I zoom out, um, the orange overlay should change. And it's actually not going to with this picture because of the quality of the photograph. That's as high as we can go. It's a higher quality photograph. The little orange box will change. So you're only seeing a portion of the photo. Um, I can download that image, I can add it to my collection. So once I've looked at a page, 
or an image, I can still add it to my collection so that it shows up in the my collection over here. Um, I wanted to point out though too, that you see the person Bud Moore. One of the things that we hope to create are more of these. These are um, ways to search the content by a person's name. So Bud Moore is um, who created this collection. There are 4,589 images that he added and 1,400 audios um, that he is interviewed in. And they all show up on this one page about him. Uh, this is gonna be great as we create more exhibits. We've got one started for Evelyn Cameron now, and we will have some for McKay and for uh, the different um, oops, photographers that I mentioned a little while ago um, so that we can explain who they are, um, what their importance was, and then all of their images can be searched in one place. So let's see. If I change the format here to person, you'll see there's only one person, Evelyn Cameron. But if I pull that, now there is a person page for her. We've just started this. It gives a history of who she is. Um, and if I scroll down, the images that she has taken have all been attributed to her page. But then we can also start, we haven't finished this. These are all still in kind of our beta mode. Um, we can add, start adding the um, diaries and the other places, other kinds of documentation that she's mentioned in so that it all pulls into this one page, regardless of who contributed it, it will go here on this page. And those are coming. So again, another reason why we made the switch from content DM to this is the ability to create these really cool ways to display content so that they are linked together and, and create a little contextual history. Questions so far? I was just going to mention that was pointed out um, to me and other people may have noticed it, that when you were doing the um, my collections and the photographs or whatever you're putting in the my collection, uh -huh. um, along the top there it said organize, which was great, but it is spelled a little differently than oh, we yeah. would spell it <laughs> because, you know, this is a New Zealand product. This is um, a New Zealand pregnant. Yeah, product. so, yes. um, so organize has an S, not a Z. <laughs> yes. And we are finding that we're running into that in a few ways. Like the way we enter dates has to be in the international date type. So, date, yeah. uh, so it's year, month, day. Um, but we are also finding that with Creative Commons license, they are not exactly the same. So we had to recreate all the Creative Commons licenses to fit US standards. Um, so there are a few things about dealing with an international company that we are learning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Starla has a question about what is that picture of on the home page? I'm so I'm not sure which one. Um, the big picture or um, the home page? I'm trying to think. There well, is Mary picture. Drew likes us a whole lot better than content DM. Thank so you, Mary Drew. So do we. <laughs> <laughs> um, that picture of the moving. Oh, yes. Is the that the one you met, Starla? Yeah, that's a, a wig in. Yeah, um, we don't have that linked, do we? And we don't yes. have it linked. We no, just, it's, shame on us. So, Pam, you talk yeah. about that. You picked it. I pick, I guess I did pick it. We we're just looking for moving. So I think I did a search of moving <laughs> and limited by photos. And I bet if you did that, you might still come up with it. Um, honestly, I can't tell you where that picture is. But I know that's what I was looking for. We wanted pictures of moving. So um, this is a good example. Let's see, Let's see how fast we can find it. There's a lot of pictures of moving, so it may take us a little while. Although I didn't search too hard, so um, it may come up pretty quickly. But I thought that was a really cool picture. Um, but oh, yeah. There's one of packing boxes. Yeah, I remember the packing boxes. Yeah, we used a, I used several of them uh, at some point. So. Yeah, you might have to you might have to go through and look and see. Yeah, there's Sorry. quite a few. We we there's didn't find it on the first pages. page, but no, oh, the idea was pages. just that we wanted we wanted a picture that showed, hey, we had to pack up and move because that's really how it felt, even though we didn't move physically. Um, yeah, <laughs> we really did feel like we had to pack everything up and move it um, to this new website, and all the metadata as well as the uh, digital items themselves had to be moved. So it was a big deal, and. It's still a work in progress, as I said. 
I'll see if I can find it real fast um, while we're still talking here. Okay. Any other questions? We we do only have four minutes left, and I'm sorry I talked a lot because there's so much to share with you about this new site, and I'm so excited. You'll notice that there is a user survey on our homepage, and if you haven't taken it, I encourage you to use it. Um, I hope this gives you an idea how to help your patrons find some content if they're looking, um, and that you'll think about rebookmarking anything that you might have had bookmarked at your library because those content TM links are now broken. And you can unmute yourself too if you want to just that's okay too. Jennifer, it looks great and so much more user friendly. It is way more user friendly. And I'm really excited that um, Dave will be starting next week. Dave Colomaria is my new MMP specialist and will be helping me to set, um, kind of monitor all the ways that you can interact with the site. One thing I didn't mention is we're gonna be able to crowdsource uh, transcripts with this new site too, which is something we couldn't do with Content DM. That's another feature we can turn on. And that's something else they will help me with, as well as the, the recollections and the tagging and the um, uh, suggesting edits, which are all things we're very excited about being able to, to turn on for our users. I will say that as I've gone through moving, I'm not coming across that picture, so I must have had a different search. <laughs> Sorry. That wasn't the something. right search term. No, yeah. it might have been packing or it might have been wagons. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it is hard to say. It looks like it's a billing image though, because that says trip and dragstead. It looks like the, the business might be, which I think was a billings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Funny. All right. Well, I think we can stop the recording if you have I it already. Will, yeah, I will stop the recording. Okay. There and you go. Uh, we have two minutes left. I'm happy to hang on the last two.